Hello and welcome to the <coughs> Hello and welcome to me choking to death. Also, welcome to the stream. And I just realized that I forgot to stop a uh, fairly high uh, activity, uh, fairly high CPU process that I meant to stop before we started here. So that totally screwed that up. Um, let's just, uh, sorry, I'm on the other machine now, checking to make sure that we uh, can do... Um, well, that didn't really help anything, so hang on. Because I did it wrong, that's why. Let's try it again. Hello, we're just going to do nothing here for a wit bit. Alright, apologies, I shouldn't have not started the stream until just now. And now the worst... Um, wow, still quite a bit of load on my uh, main CPU here. I am going to try to kill it. Stand by. The, um, the processes that are harming the the system, not the system itself. Because if I kill the system itself, uh, I would. That's where I'm twitching from. So um, never thought about it, but saying that you're twitching kind of sounds weird. But anyway, this is where I'm twitching from. Um, so if I killed this machine, no stream, which would be a benefit for most people. Um, but you know, but that would sort of defeat the purpose of annoying people. Okay, we're still having some issues here. Sorry about this. Um, really, I have a I have a little reminder to fix this before we go on stream, but I ignore my reminder, so that's not very helpful. All right, so we are we are still in a um, sort of ugly situation here uh, with a high CPU level. I don't know how well it's my stream is coming through. Um, I guess I probably don't even care now that I think about it. All right, I'm just going to assume the stream, stream is coming through fine and that the high load on the other machine is not affecting uh, the stream. I, I don't really care if it is or isn't. What are, okay, so we don't really have a real high load here. The web content, well, let's just see what our uptime is here. We have a, uh, yeah, load average is effectively zero here. Okay, so today what we're going to do, or this time what we're going to do, totally unrelated to what we did last time, uh, is we're going to try to figure out constellation boundaries again. And last time we sort of got stymied on that because we were unable to use Brandon Rhodes. Um, no fudge, hold on. Okay, so now I need to... I screwed something up, so now I need to make sure that the README stream that I have is the latest version. And if it's not, I need to merge the latest version with this version. Okay, so... Okay, so I think if we get rid of autocomplete stuff here, um, all right, and this is good. We I think we're about five minutes into the stream, less than five minutes into the stream. We are um, three and a half minutes into the stream, and I've already fucked things up several times. So I'm I'm pretty happy actually. Um, okay, so let's see. I think the only thing I changed here was. I removed autocomplete stuff, which is good because we've done that. And I added the line constellation boundaries. I, that should have been with the question mark. But anyway, so let me just make sure everything is cool. I can I forget, you can actually see this. I'm doing a diff between the old and the new version. And the only thing this version is missing is autocomplete stuff. And we took care of that, so we're done. OK, so we had a problem earlier because we couldn't use Brandon Rhodes um, cool little programmy thing to do this. Um, however, um, we should be able to do this on our own, and it should not really be that difficult, I think. Um, so let's see if we can find, uh, let's see if we can take care of this. I uh, kind of wish I had uh, remembered where the hell I'm, what, what the hell I'm doing, but I think we have constellations in here somewhere. And when I say that, of course, I mean we probably do not. We do have constellation boundaries somewhere. Oh, hang on. Um, oh, yeah, here's constellations NPZ. This is how, yep, 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 yep. All right. This is how Python Skyfield does it. This is the thing we could not use. Uh, now that I think about it, or now that I just realized it, um, uh, Stellarium. Okay. 
Stellarium also has uh, constellation boundaries, obviously. And now that I think about it, we might be able to use those. I had not thought about this before. I w my plan was somewhat different. Constellation names, constellations art. Um, it's got to have the boundary somewhere, right? And... I mean, it would have it under sky cultures, but I think, um, let's see, I think, I mean, sort of, I guess, well, okay. No, I guess constellation boundaries do depend on what sky culture you're using. We're going to use the standard, you know, Western um, default constellation boundaries. Let's see what, uh, okay, not cool. Alrighty. Da, 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 da. So these are the ping files that tell us what they look like, and they're beautiful. I don't have Faye on this machine, do I? Nope. I need to get it. Oh, this is really bad. So let's see. Um, let's see. Locono. Alright, so maybe Constellation Boundaries is a little bit higher up. Um... The, by, by, I mean, you know, the IAU ones, I, I'm trying to, those are the ones I'm trying to find. Um, yeah, here we are. Um, and these appear to be the precessed boundaries, which we probably do not want, because uh, we want to precess ourselves and then use sort of straight lines to uh, to determine the constellation, kind of a silly thing to do, but you never you know. Um, so I think somewhere here we do ha there we are constellations. Come on, okay. And again, this is these are really nice, not useful, but but nice. Um, Let's I don't think there's any extra information in this file that tells us anything. So let's see. Somewhere we do have constellation data. Uh, kernels. Uh-huh. Well, doesn't that kick all? Let's see. I doubt it will be... You know what? It actually might be in constellations in a subdirectory. Um, assuming there is no, there are no subdirectories here. Okay, so this is good. This is good. We're 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 getting annotations, Latin pronunciation. Uh, what are the annotations here? Yeah. Um, okay. So great shape here. I need to fix my Durs alias too, but that's for later. Okay, so under Spice here we have, I don't think they're going to be under Spice 64. Um, because Spice doesn't actually have this, um, the hell is this? Oh, this is the database that, uh, that tells when, um, the planets are conjuncting each other. Uh, I don't know why it's different from conjuncts, but at one point I knew. Um, I'm pretty sure that it's not going to be in NAIF either, actually, to be honest. Um, yeah. All right, let me find it, and I'm, I'm sure we have it here somewhere. Um, I'm on my other machine trying to find out where it is. Uh, let's see. Okay. So far, not not very good. Oh, actually, now I think I know where it might be. Um, it might be under no backup. I don't have no backup here, do I? All right, we're gonna get it. We will find it. Get me. Okay. Wow. Um, I actually think it's in, um, in, uh, this place that I have that doesn't back up data, but, um, wow. 
God damn. Shouldn't mean the guy had two kernels. Um, all right, still the king. And oh, hang on, we have something. We have nothing. Okay, so fantastic stream so far, complete waste of your time. <sighs> but I remain unapologetic to you. I'm pretty sorry about myself, though. All right. There should be constellation boundaries here Some. Oh, here we are. Um... I, I found it, now I need to make sure we can get it over here, but I'm pretty sure we've already looked at it. Oh! It's in BC Git Astro, surprisingly enough. Um... Constbund... This sounds really terrible, but... Let's see, this is... These are the ones that, um... These are the, the boundaries between constellations. These are the points that make up the boundaries between constellations. Um, unfortunately, I have no idea what the frick they mean. Okay. So, this is Andromeda. I guess this is saying this is a point in Andromeda. Um, and these are the boundaries of Andromeda with other things. And this w would be really useful because we need to point internal to Andromeda to decide where the inside of that polygon is and where the outside of that polygon is. Um, so if my interpretation is correct, uh, we can actually use these lines and use this point to determine you know, what side of the boundary we're on. Um, so, let's see, 23.3... At one point I considered using, like, a QGIS or something to deal with this, which I think it could do, actually. I think, I think it's, um... I think it's a doable way of doing this problem. Um... So, the... Who... The only question we need to figure out is... What does this point represent? Um, in 1875, when this was created, and can we use that to determine? Um, you know, our halfway points are always going to be things like between the constellation lines, um, and this is actually ugly because it it splits across the 24-hour line. Okay, let's see if we have anything better than that. Um, unfortunately, this, while correct, is, um, yeah, this, while correct, is, these are, I think, just polygon lines. This is a uh, pre to J2000, which I'm getting closer and closer to using, because it looks like it's a hell of a lot easier. Let's see what's in this, con okay, so in this constellation, we do actually have, um, the, what, what the way we need them. Um, I'm pretty sure we never got, yeah, this is, we never got around to doing anything with this. Um, okay. And BC Constell M, which we could put into Wolfram Cloud, I'm pretty sure we also didn't get into, um, oh. Um, wow. Okay, so here I was trying to use Mathematica to be clever. Let's not do that. Centers 18. Oh, wait. 
Boy, that's really... So these are points that I guess are guaranteed to be in the center of somewhere in the constellation, which is good, and I'm assuming that's right ascension, declination, and two numbers we don't... Is that area and number? Um, maybe there's a readme file here, huh? Um... Okay. So we'll use his readme. Okay. Vertices, edges, boundaries, lines, centers. Okay, this is really going to be useful here. Um, vertex key. Right, ascent key of first vertex. Oh, okay. So these are the edges. That that's probably okay. Um, I think the boundary file should suffice for us. Um, byte by byte description files of vines. Okay. Okay. This should not be difficult. Especially since we know where the centers are. And this is unfortunately once again the precessed values that we don't want. Um, why is there a make file here? Oh. That's why. It doesn't really do anything useful. Um... Let's look, quick look at edges. Okay, that's really. A, I guess these are the these are the bounding lines here. Um, okay. So I guess lines in eighteen is probably what we need, or lines eighteen or lines in eighteen. Okay. Wow. I am I am stumped by polygons. Oh, which I should not be. Alright. Bound ed? What does that give us? Okay, so these are the polygons. Uh, these are the points that make up the polygons. And I guess I think the only the only difference here is they they decimalize these. Okay. Um, okay. Wait, is this degree by degree? I mean, there's no need to have all these lines here. Um, all right. Let's see if we can get two files going at once. Let's go ahead and look at the. Um, Let's go ahead and look at the, the real readme file here to see what bound in is. Interpolated boundaries. Why would you need to interpolate boundaries for 1875? Because they are supposed to be um, they're supposed to be accurate. So in 1875 uh, these were straight lines. They're now curved, but um, Vertices, edges, and SEX, by the way, doesn't mean sexual intercourse here. It means uh, the, the sexagamal notation, and it means it's going to look like this, hours, minutes, and seconds, instead of decimal, which is the way we want it. So, um, so this one's one we want. I don't know why we need interpolated boundaries. Um... Okay, so let's see. Interpolated boundary, merged edges. Okay. Um, I guess this is probably the closest thing we have to actual data from 
the original book. Um, counterclockwise declinations. Um, okay. Interpolated, interpolated, merged, interpolated, interpolated, constellation centers. Okay, so this in centers 18 should be what we need. So here we draw a polygon starting from 22, blah, 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 going here. Uh, and crap, do we pass the 20? We do pass the 24 line, unfortunately. Um... Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I think I might, I might get a better visual image of this if we were to uh, at least freaking try to print it out. Um... Pomodoro, back in two and two. Okay, and we're back. Now I'm going to double check to see if Mathics can at least plot something in two dimensions. If it can, this might actually be a, a possible use of Mathics. Although I have grave doubts. So this should just plot two points. And I just realized we have no way of looking at it, so that's not very helpful. A GNU plot can probably do this as well. And let's see if we can. That might actually be useful. All right, so we're going to do a BZ cat on this. Uh, and we just want the first two fields. Okay. All right, T that to temp. New text, new plot, plot temp, new text. Okay, cool. So we're getting somewhere with lines. Okay, that looks hideous. Um, partly because we're going between 0 and 24. Lines, points. That doesn't help us at all. Okay. But now what we can do is we can, instead of um, plotting, let's just plot like one of them, like Andromeda, although I think Andromeda is one of the ones uh, that has an issue with, um, uh, 
has an issue with crossing over the uh, 24 line boundary. And is that just what we want here? New. No. Yes. No. All right, hang on. Okay, it's not lines 18. It is, which one was it again? Uh, bound 18. Bound 18, I think, is the one we want. Okay, so we can do this. Just get the first two fields out of it. Um, and put that into temp new dot text, and then overwrite temp new dot text, and then do this. Okay, so this is the constellation of Andromeda with a few kind of wonkinesses because it's going across the 24 uh, zero line, which is not good, of course. Um, now, there might be someone who has done the constellation boundaries in a way that fixes this. In other words, breaks Andromeda into two, two pieces uh, so this doesn't happen. And, uh, and if not, we might be able to do that. We might be able to say, okay, if you're going to cross a, a boundary, um, we're going to break that into two sort of boundaries for you. But let's take a look here. Um, so, so what the interpolated boundaries, there's just something weird about that I want to look at. Um, and those would be, the uh, interpolated boundaries would be bound in 18, meaning, boy, that, that could, if you look for the word bound 18, I'm guessing you're going to get a lot of stuff that has nothing to do with astronomy. But bound in 18 is the interpolation. Um, so I guess is this a, um, I don't see how this is a benefit, but okay. Um, unless the, no, because we're, we're still, um, we're still jumping across the, uh, oh, 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 and oh some more. This apparently defines the, uh, for every sort of grid point, it defines what the constellation is. Um, so this actually could be really helpful. And so this grid point is, okay, this is good actually. This is more useful than I thought. Um, assuming we can assume that that we just need to find the nearest grid point. I'm suspicious. Um, so in theory, we can just find the nearest grid point, and and say that's where um, that's what constellation it's in. But I'm very suspicious of this. Um, Let's take a quick look to see how many elements it has. Well, 1,238. Okay. That sounds interesting. All right. So let's look at the first coordinates here, the right ascensions, essentially. <laughs> it's funny. Um, let's see how many of those there are. And do they come, like, literally every... No, they do not come every uh, possible uh, eight. So they're going to be like, I'm going to sort them by number, but still. They're going to be like 527 of those. Okay, okay. Um, so what this tells us, I, I'm going to guess these interpolations are between the constellation boundaries. So they're telling us sort of like where exactly if you're in this okay, let's let's take a look here. Alright. Let's do my readme. Okay, good. Nothing interesting there. Um so let's see. Let's just take a quick look at a line from bound in eighteen. Um, la 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 la. Let's just 
man, okay. Let's just use this line as a line from bound in 18. Um, and then let's take a look at the, um, the um, bound 18. All right, so the guess here would be all right, so let's take a look at all the um, let's take a look at all the possible right ascensions that are in bound eighteen, um, and we'll sort them numerically, and we'll look at them. Okay, and my guess will be this one is not going to be in there. This is going to be one that is between two of them, uh, and I'm wrong. It's actually one. It is in there. Um, Okay. So then the question is are do all of the right ascensions match? And then we have like let's find out. <laughs> okay. So promise and we'll say temp. Um gotta be careful here. We these are bound eighteen bound in 18 so there's that and then the bound in 18 um, be nice to know how to use these okay okay they're not identical that's good so show me the stuff that is in bound 18 that is not in bound in 18, well, temp bound in 18, obviously. Whoa, 10. Did I not sort the other one correctly? I did. Okay. Well, show me the stuff that's the other way around, I guess, but that's weird. Um, that's not helpful. Mm. All right. This, they're not supposed to be identical, but let me meld and see what's going on here. Okay. Okay, so the interpolated one exclusively has more data than the, um, well, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, this, this looks like that's what we're saying here. And we kind of want the, the bound in 18, the interpolated ones, to go every nth element. I mean, they should be kind of like, uh, you know, they should be form a grid, but I think maybe they do form a grid. Um, in the sense that, okay. All right, let's do this. Okay, so we know that the bound um, 18, uh, these are the right, okay, so this is, uh, so this, th these will form a grid. Um, uh, so 236 and, okay. Okay, okay. So these will form a grid of 236 by we do the declinations. And let's do the um, decl declinations here. We have, I don't know why that ends at 78. So I think we're coming very close to the uh, same file that Brandon Rhodes is using. Um, and this determines the um, where the declination boundaries are and then the interpolations should give us enough values to tell in each of the grid points what is the, uh, the name of the constellation there. 
I don't think what I just said is correct, but but let's go with it. Um, I think we can we can do something here. Um, and there isn't a profile already, so that's always a good thing. Um, let's go ahead and require my library. Things are bad enough without it. Okay. And... Okay, let's see. Yeah, I think we can do this. All right. Um, count down to 18. Pipe. And let's just do a chador here. Um, uh, that's incorrect. BC lib BC git slash astro slash constellations. So. Yeah, Chidur. Okay. That's good enough. Um, we're going to debug the thunk. And let's profix it so it will run. Rehash, although we didn't shouldn't need to do that. And let's see if this even works. Can't chitter. Okay. What directory are we in? Not good. Since I misspelled something. Nope, it's BC lib get home, because I just cannot be consistent. All right. So what we want here is basically the three fields here, which are the right ascension, the declination, and the constellation. And honestly, I don't think we need the constellation because we're going to get that from the interpolated boundaries. Okay. Um, my RA, but we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and get it anyway. Split on any number of spaces. Um, the thunk. Okay. And then we can just debug RA and DEC. Okay. Oh. Well, well, well. Apparently, which is why we had that other error there, uh, apparently, uh, if there's a space in front of it, it throws off my split. Um, so if there are any spaces at the beginning, we're going to get rid of them, and now, that would explain why my, um, my earlier extraction didn't work. Okay, here we go. La 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 la. La 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 la. Okay. So now, what we want to say is, uh, we're going to keep a list of right ascensions and declinations that represent boundaries. Uh, and we're just going to say... Okay, and dex deck equal one. Now there is a slight problem here, and that is we are dealing with integers. We're dealing with floating point numbers. You're not supposed to do that. Um, so can we do this in seconds of arc? Probably. I'm just curious if anyone's already done it. Yeah. And obviously we'll need to round because that's the whole point of getting rid of the integer stuff. Okay. Um, so, can we do it in minutes or is that going to be not... No, because some of them are broken on a uh, third of a minute boundary. And I think we can get away with, uh, you know, thirds of minutes. But, you know, if we're going to rock and roll, we might as well rock and roll, baby. So rounding will make sure that we don't get any funny integer stuff going on. Okay. And now let's boogie with this minus minus. And I don't think any of them are broken. No. Beautiful. 
beautiful. Now minus numbers are fine. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Love it. Love it. Okay. Now we want the right ascensions. They're going to form a grid essentially. Right ascensions are going to be the keys of RAS. I'm going to just hope here the sort knows to be. Um, knows to be of numerical I don't uh, let's uh, but let's see if it is if it's not w there we can fix it but uh, no it's not it's 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 alphabetical not to worry this is a pearlism a and B are not actually variables this is just a pearl way of sorting by something other than um, other than alphabetical order all right, boogie. Okay. Um, so now, so now our curiosity here is what are the sizes of these? Because they're going to form a grid when you multiply them by each other. And it's Pomodoro time, but give me one. Let's give it one second here. So 235 times 198. Okay. All right, back in two and two. And we are back. So now we're going to go ahead and um, loop through these. And since it is a, um, um, since we are talking about grids, we will need to know the point and the point after it. So we're going to say basically uh, zero to one to dollar sign number RAs because the first grid point is going to go from zero to one. So this actually is maybe a little bit easier. One two dollar sign number decks. Boy, I'm, I have a wide. Hmm, it's kind of strange. Okay. So our range here is going to be RAs I minus. I wonder if that's going to work. Minus one to RAs I. Let's just see if that part works. That's going to be very spammy, but that's okay. We'll. 40, okay. Yeah, it looks, 
looks like it's going to work. And then, of course, it's going to be the declination is going to be from the previous declination to this declination. Okay. Alrighty. So. Oh, I guess the declinations are. Yeah, they can be negative. That's fine. So the question now here is we need to figure out for each of these grids um, what the constellation is in, in this grid point. Now, 120, which is the, the average of 0 and 240, is this number. So our hope is to see that number in the center point, because that is going to be the, the interpolated grid point. Um, and if it's not, we're kind of screwed. So, you know. Um, centers, ET. Nope, I meant centers in. Nope. Bound in 18? Okay. Uh, all right, let's take a look here at the... There's only two in files, right? Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Um... Yeah, I was kind of hoping we would have one of those. Oh, actually, it might not be quite that, uh, quite that dramatic. Um, I was repping for, like, a, a whole bunch of... Ooh. Uh-huh. Okay. Confused. Okay, so this point here in seconds. Well, actually, let me take a let me take a look at the first um, the first point there again. Okay, so it goes from there to there and there to there. And I guess GNU plot has to go away now. Okay. So this goes from zero to like a third of a degree to, that's got to be minus, really? Something was really, really wrong. Oh, I see what's wrong. There we go. Okay, maybe we should... Three oh six a thousand over three thirty six hundred. Minus eighty five. Uh oh. Something already smells a little bit wrong here. We do need to go all the way down to minus ninety. Minus 2 is to minus 82.5. Okay. So let's actually have these print out as... Um, as we're going to convert them back to degrees because that's a little bit easier. Just for right now, we, we probably won't maintain that convention. Um, But for right now, because we're trying to figure out what we're doing, we will... Is it dex? It is dex. Okay. So we're going to convert this back into to degrees of arc. Um, and then we're going to sort of ask the question, um, how do we figure out what's in this box? And presumably we will be able to find an answer in the the centers. Okay. I don't know why I did that, but okay. All right, so let's do this. And why don't we even just do like, a, just look at the first few of them. Okay. And so we want to know what the constellation here is. Um, you know, if your R is between zero and, and this number here, and your declination is here. So now, we should be able to look at centers 18. 
Nope. Sorry, I didn't mean that. I meant... Um, I think it's bound interpolation 18. And... Let's see. So, minus 85. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Minus 85, and we're looking for between 0 and... Um, okay. Okay, so maybe I'm, I'm getting confused here. Um... So I would expect or hope to find uh, the midpoint of these two, which is uh, two and a half to one point two five, eighty three point seven five. Um, but I'm not finding that, so I am misinterpreting these numbers. So I guess. Um, I'm guessing I, if dollar sign F1, okay, hang on, I'm going to run into the same problem that I had earlier with spaces. Uh, yeah, I might, so hang on. God. Um, let's just F grab plus 85 and see what's going on there. And I did not mean centers 18, I did mean bound in 18. Which, again, sounds so much like bound and 18. Ah, killing me. Um, okay. I guess I should have said minus 85, huh? And in order to make it think that minus isn't that, we should do this. And I probably should have sorted by the first field, but let's just go with this. Um, so is there a minus 83.75? There is not. Is there a minus 83? Ooh, there is. But it's not helpful because we're looking for the RA of between 0 and 0 0.667. So let's see. Let's see what this does. Okay, hang on. We're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere here. Okay. So 0, 0, 0 minus 82.5. That's the boundary here. We're saying that is... I don't is that? I don't know what HYI is, actually, but I mean, it's a constellation of some sort. Unless we're freaking looking at records that are too old to be useful, and they changed it. But anyway, let's pretend for right now that we can convert, if necessary. Um, so what does this tell us? This has RA in this range, and declination... What is this interpolation if it's not going to do anything? Okay. And... Hmm. And honestly, how do we know which side anything is on? I guess we have to find pairs of boundaries, but even that doesn't really help. Um, mm. 
I mean, I guess you could look at the square and try to go up until you find the constellation boundary, and you know, left and right until you find the constellation boundary. Um, that just does not seem like a good way to do it, though. What benefit is the interpolation giving us? And presumably there's some reason to do it this way. And that we have this b these boundaries interpolated instead of just giving us the direct ones. So what is the benefit there? Wait. Wait, wait, wait. Something's wrong. Uh, these should not be the same. Um... Okay, that was a mistake. Let's try that again. Although I don't know how that actually managed to work. Ah, here we go. Okay. So we're starting with the right ascension that's between, you know, 0 and 0 0.006, which is fine. And then we're looking at the different declinations as we go up uh, across the... Uh, as the declinations increase in this little tiny square. So this actually might be more useful. Um, so we're looking for 0 0.066. That should be more than enough to get what we want. Uh, no, it's not. Okay, and then I want, kind of want to sort by the second key. Let's do that real quick. Okay, now, now we're cutting with the ass here. All right, so we have um, this boundary, zero to this, and minus 85 to 80.2, and then minus 82.5 to minus 76. Hmm. So this is the HYI OCT border. Okay. All right. So there should be a zero there. So there it is. Zero point zero 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 zero. So why didn't that get matched? Oh, because there's not a space after it. Hmm. Okay, so I'm not seeing how this interpolation is helpful to us. Uh, and I guess we could do either that or that. And if we're doing that, we might as well egrep the damn thing. Okay. I guess for this we actually need it to be that. Okay, here we go. Um, um, I'm pretty sure I meant to put a zero in front of that. Okay. All right, so we have this point here, 82 to 80. Okay, so this is, where's 85? Man. All right. So at the 82.5 line, we have this, this, and this. Um, and then when we increase our RA, this is not helpful. Um, Eighty-two point five to seventy. S 
six. Okay, I have no idea why these interpolated coordinates are any better than um, these lines. Okay, I'm wiped. Let's take a look here. We might have to go to Mr. Google. Okay, I think these are the current boundaries, which also don't help us much. Uh, they might help us slightly more if we had them in decimal form, but I don't really... Um, Well, maybe bound edges, you know, I don't, I'm just kind of, kind of, ooh, that looks shiny because it has more letters in it, okay, bound edges, that sounds shiny, all right, so why don't we tell us, talk about bound edges a little bit, um, key of first vertex, Meridian or parallel, increasing direction, okay. Um, oh, and this is in seconds. Oh, no, it's in the wrong format, but whatever. Um, so wait, this is bound edges. What about edges 18? Okay. All right, uh, Pomodoro back in two and two. Okay, and we're back. Okay. Okay, so this is uh, bound edges. And the other one is just edges. So they are different. All right, and the format here is edge type, edge direction. Okay. Okay. And none of this seems to have any help in how to interpret this data, which is fine, because that's my job. But it is now going to become Google's job, because I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. All right. Um, determine, ah, let's do it over here. Determine constellation interior. That's something that no one ever does. Um... 
this is a little bit too simple. Um, okay. Constellation boundaries. Maybe someone has a nice or format for them. Um, okay, so this is P. This is P. Barbier, where I got this data to begin with. Um, provides coordinates. It's still a reference source. Uh, they're interesting. For example, which has reproductions, including available. Okay. Um, Um, in order to facilitate plotting, also the right ascension was set to zero. So okay. Uh, inform cluster. Well, pff, okay, we're kind of moving away from that now. Um. Okay. Okay, let's see. Say the three points lie in the same segment of meridian or parallel with Q between P and then PR and then PR borders constellation on one side will um, uh, always in the same direction looking from the inside. Um, ooh. Boundary files in the order of their appearance and assigns them a unique key. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So there's quite a bit of information here that we're going to read, but I think the goal here is to make get it closer to the original form, which is we're kind of looking for it the other way. Um, we're looking to make it easier on ourselves, not more difficult. Um, yeah, well, that's that's good. That's all good stuff. Um, um, Okay, this uh, this might be the exact same data, but it might have a little bit nicer stuff, like it doesn't... Oh! Um, they're probably going to notify me that my... I've used a certain amount of... of I'm past 50% bandwidth. Um... But that should not cause a problem with my connection. One more time. Yeah, well, they seem annoyed now. All right, stand by. Let me go over here and just force them to give me that information. And on my other machine, oh, cool, there's no pop-up. All right. Um, whoa, now there's plenty of results, where's the other page, oh, they're there, um, okay, okay, this might be useful, oh, 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 that was a PDF, um, Constellation boundaries, precisional skew. <sighs> oh, yeah, maybe somebody's already done it, huh? Okay. Um... This is what we're looking for, constellation containing. Um, now let's just see if this does this, okay. Okay, so this uses the, uh, the, uh, why didn't we think of this? Of course someone else has coded this. Um, C 
So it returns an integer, but we have an enum of constellation somewhere, presumably. So, so actually, that's actually not a bad thing to have. Let's let's see if we can do constellation boundaries site github.com. I was going to go into Perl or into uh, I was going to look for a C program. Uh, constellation boundaries. Whoa, 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 whoa. Um. Uh, um. Okay. I think this is just something they include anyway. Oh yeah, that's not helpful. Um, okay. So apparently, yanking astronomy astrometry.net, this um, this is going to do this for us. Okay. It's a lot of ugly shit there. I'm not happy with this. And we could use this to create an easier version of this, but now we're getting kind of silly. This is, we're pushing the limits here. Let's see if there's anything with the word pearl in it. Okay. Unlike unlike the constellation boundaries. Okay. So let's get closer here. I actually have a program that plots the boundaries, but it doesn't tell you which a given which constellation a given location is in. Um, now there are such lists. Um, Several million stars, you exaggerate a little bit there. Okay. Of course, the server doesn't need to exist anymore. Okay. Uh. This is what it wants to, wanted to tell me. Um. So this is actually not stuff they should be telling me because it could be very private and I might not want to be showing this information to others. But they're fucking morons who deserve to be killed. Slowly and painfully. Um, so these are... Well, these are just charts. That's what I'm looking for. All right. I'm pretty sure the constellation boundary here in text is just a piece of something else. 
Um, yeah, so this says if you start here and go in here, god damn it. That's not useful. Okay, hang on, let's see. Okay. Alrighty. Um, so let's let's see if the vertices help us. Any. They probably won't. Nothing else has. Um, so these are the vertices that are shared by multiple constellations. Um, presumably, if you wanted to, well, I think we can get them in decimal format. Actually. Hang on. Yeah, let's do less bound verts. 18, that should be in... No, it's not. Cool. Okay. Hmm. So one way of trying to do something with this would be to start, for example, at the center of a constellation, which we do have the centers, and move until you hit a boundary line. Or figure out what the boundary line is that is the next and previous boundary lines for you. And that would determine um, which stars were in a given constellation. Um, so that would be that would be one approach, and uh, that's and then we would um, yeah. Um, I guess that could work if we ignored the fact that we went right past the twenty-four hour boundary, because um, the centers are going to we're going to be have left with a lot of crap if we don't define the centers uh, correctly, but we might be able to get around that problem. Um, so centers 18. Wow. Oh, so these are actually like the ge geometrical centers. Uh, these are not the... Uh, these are not the, the centers in terms of nice average, you know, nice numbers that convert to seconds nicely. Okay. Uh, we might be able to use this. We might be able to use this and then say, um, yeah, wow. Um, yep, this could be very ugly. Um, and it still doesn't solve the problem of constellations breaking the the 24 barrier. All right, constellation boundaries in C C language. Let's see what that does. Um, C library. Yeah, let's see if we can find a library that does this for us. Uh, well, this guy. Um, Storium does it in a kind of a different way. Constellations. Eight seven one one two. Again, um, really not great to be doing that. I I am in eight seven one one two, but but still. All right. So do we want to download just this thing and? Um, See if we can make it work for us. Uh, God damn it! Must include library. And must include C. Still quite a few presumable results. Ah, here we go.
constellation boundaries. Okay, good. Something tells me these are not going to be what I want. But hey, what the hell. Um, let's see what that is. Oh, wow. It's still coming down. Unless it, it maybe that this just does, doesn't even... Wow. Um. All right. This should not be difficult, but that doesn't affect how difficult it actually is. Um, while we're trying to... Oh, there we go. There we go. Um, and I doubt this is going to be useful. But let's take a look. Oh, actually. Oh, hello, this is a very simple file. Okay, good, good, good. Is though, okay, showcase, we blah, 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 blah. Um, ooh, that looks really good. Okay, Pomodoro time, back in two and two. And we're back. Now let's see what this is. This might be a much better format. Ooh. So apparently someone wrote this in 1987 and this is, this is exactly what we need, I think. Uh, lower, upper, uh, both in unit of hours? I think he means degrees. Um, oh, no, maybe he does mean hours. And then the constellation number. Wait. Okay. Lower right ascension, upper right ascension, lower declination. Name of constellation. Okay, this is good, but where is the... Um, where is the upper declaration? Declination. Um, so we're very close to what we need. Uh, second, these are hours times 3600, which is effectively the same. Um, so this is good shit. Um, I guess if we sort the lower declinations in order, uh, it will tell us... Um, so the next thing with 086,400, 
Ah, uh, man. Okay. So, we're very, very close. Um, so let's see how he does it. I'm sure there's a way to find the upper declination once you have the lower declination. Um, okay. Damn. Find constellations such that the declination entered is higher than the lower boundary of the constellation when the upper and lower right ascensions for the constellation bound the entered right ascension. Well, I mean, okay. Um, so he looks through all of them. He, he goes through and looks for all of them. Um, He test this is nice. Damn, if this compiles I'll be really impressed. Mmm. So going so well. Alright. And he does not seem to define precession. And is there anything else in this constal.zip? I don't think there was, right? There's just that. Okay. Include Studio H. Define r r radiance to degrees. Um, constellation names, blah, 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 blah. Precess, we do not have... Um, we don't really need it, but, um... Uh, is he even using the precessed values? I think that's a comment. I think he means that as a comment. Oh, no, no, oh, let's see, PI equals PPI. Um, okay. Precess. So apparently whatever precess does is it changes the value of P. Um, we might be able to get rid of this whole procession thing here because we can just do our own procession when as necessary. Um, okay. And this is, um, PP Epoch. So, can we do this without this, uh, without having to go through that routine? Okay, let's find out. Um, so lots of good stuff here. Uh, not well written code, but back in for the day. This isn't bad, actually. Um, let's see. Well, Q print is low, is up, is number, skip WH, the table. I think we might have to use this table. Return the constellation name corresponding to the given mean equatorial position. What constel? Double PP double. Okay. Um, so it takes as input something called a PP. <laughs> Is it PP? An epoch. I think. Uh, but it doesn't seem to take in a right ascension and declination. 
Although honestly, I think the only parts of the program that matter are the list and this part right here, where he basically says, find the constellation such that the declination entered is higher than the lower boundary of the constellation when the upper and lower uh, right ascensions for the constellation bound. It sounds very complicated, but it basically says, figure out what between what boundaries this constellation is. Okay, so pieces da da da. So, so who calls this function? Apparently, I don't think you can call it directly because you constell. Okay, that's that's. Oh 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 no, that's the definition of it. Aha. Aha aha aha. Um. P two was P K. Um, so test RD is right ascension and declination. You convert them to vectors on the unit sphere. Um, this is this is pretty standard spherical X Y Z stuff. Um, something something the Basilian epo epoch, and then what constellation P and J D, which is odd because oh, and the epoch would be J D. Okay, I get it. Okay, I get it. <laughs> Um, and this was in 1987, so, um, really, he could have been using J2000, but whatever. Okay. So. Mm. Okay, I think this is, this is doable. It's ugly. And I think I could put this into Perl and have it determine where each chunk of the of the boundary things that we have is and then use that data inside of C. Um, but it kind of vaguely... I guess the other thing that bugs me is where do we have constellation ten defined? Uh, I guess it's going to be in, in this in this array. Um, this is an enum, right? Uh, and by the way, uh, Serpy, the um, serpent uh, is treated as two constellations because it's split by Ophi uh, the Ophiophilus, the doctor. Okay. Wow. Okay, so I think this is this is the data we need, and I'm sort of curious to see if it appears any, if this is the same data that appears anywhere else. Um, not necessarily in this form, so because this is a really unusual looking um, number when you divide it by 3,600. Um, so I, I'm sort of surprised. So, I guess this has got to be in here somewhere. Uh, I guess it is. No, wait, 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 wait. Yep, there it is. Boundaries 18. So, what he's done here is he has computed the right and left chunks and the lower declination. You know actually tempted to find this reference and since we have more time I have lots of time I don't know about you um, let's see if we can read it uh, let's see if we can download it oh a table permits rapid determination based on its 18 cent keyboard of case okay um, precess the, okay, that's fine. Read down the, until a declination lower than or equal to the declination of the object is reached. Shift to the column headed RAU and read down until higher than the object. And read down until it's lower than the object. Check the, if it is higher than the right ascension. Otherwise, repeat to find a pair whose brackets are okay. Mm. 
So let's go ahead and print the whole paper. Because we're fucking greedy, that's why. Alright. And there it is. Events, 1987, blah, 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 blah. Okay, come on, don't do that. And I think part of it is going to be the converted to... Uh, oh, yeah, because this I don't think I can cut and paste from that. Um, but... Hopefully this, this converted to... Oh, man! That's not cool. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Alright, so here's what we do. Why is this looking so ugly? I mean, if it's... Alright. All right, let's look at these tables, see what they are. Okay. Um... This is so close to being useful. Uh, so what we're looking for is... All right. Until declination lower than or equal to the declination of the object is reach. Okay, I can certainly do that. And, well, these are a nice reverse declination order, too. That helps. Um, and then I guess we te check to see it's within the... Okay, so we found this line, and now the question is is the array between this and this. So what we're doing here is we're finding the maximum declination. God, I hope there's no visitors. Okay. Um, we're finding the maximum declination that is less than uh, this. Um, okay, this actually makes sense. So we're finding the declination that is um, that is less than this Okay, so we're looking for the declination. Um, uh, all the declinations less than this this object, and then we see if it falls into the um, the right ascension range. If it doesn't, we keep going down until we find one where it does fall in the right ascension range. Um, and we know because we could not have crossed a declination boundary that hits this RA that we are in good shape. So that is actually a pretty clever way of doing things. You can do the, the same thing with the declination, of course, but um, but this is actually pretty good. So we can get around all that by you know creating our little, our grid that we want to create. But let's see if we can now do this using the original data instead of using this sort of uh, hack data that somebody else has created. Um, so let's see. Something tells me this is not going to work. But hey, what do I know? Um, okay. All right. Um, well, all right. Well, let's let's boogie down then. And let's go ahead and get um, Constellations Pearl. Okay, so what we do here is, let's see, uh, we found about, oh shit. So what we really want is the, the center point of this, and then we want to sort of go down declination-wise until, um, until we find a declination that's less. Um, and then within an RA range that fits. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Well, it might be useful now to actually keep track of which constellation 
uh, we're in, so let's just do um, constant, not for constant, oh, that's going to really be ugly, but is this Perl, ugliness is a good thing. So constellation of RA deck equals um, const. Love how you can reuse variables in Perl. Okay, so when we come over here, we can actually also get constellation of RA1 and constellation of RA2. I think we're getting somewhere. And here we can get the constant, oh, I need parentheses. And then, and then we might as well just do this as a separate line. Constellation of deck one and constellation of deck two. And I realize you need to put a dollar sign there. Okay. All right. So this will tell us what con what you know what the boundaries or whatever are for why am I not happy with this? Um, I don't think this will compile, but what the hell? Let's find out. Yep, I probably need to be in VC get astral constellations for that to work. Yeah. Okay, Pomodoro back in two and two. And we're back. And I just realized a much bigger mistake here. Uh, obviously, the constellation positions are only given for combinations of right ascensions and declinations. So it's really going to be more like this. Probably having four of them is not a great idea. Um, So we'll say RA1 to RA2. Uh, deck is going to be deck 1 to deck 2. And there's no guarantee every one of these combinations will necessarily have a, uh, a constellation associated with it. Okay. Should probably fix my other problems as well. Let's see what boogie down and see what happens. That's not what I expected. And why? Oh, we're just doing head. I'll do less. Okay. Not at all what I expected. Uh, so this is after we multiply by 3600. Um, oh. Yeah. Let's go ahead and not divide because we'll get back into floating point world where we don't want to be. Alrighty. Let's take a look. 
Interesting. Um, okay, that, that is interesting. <sighs> so does this give me any information of what constellation I'm in? Wow. This clearly was a mistake here. All right. Um, yeah, I guess I guess what I'm not getting here is uh, what the boundary line is actually saying. And we're looking at um, the interpolated bounds. And so this is saying this is a boundary point of Andromeda. Um, okay. Okay, I think I see what is sort of going on here. Um, for each declination level, you have like ranges of right ascensions. And you could certainly treat them like that as well. And similarly for each right ascension range, you have declination numbers. Um, but the question then becomes, Okay, so we probably should be looking like at a, for a given right ascension, looking at all the declinations. Or for a given declination, look at all the right ascension boundaries. But there's a problem with that because um, because it's possible there's a right ascension boundary that starts higher and goes lower. That doesn't happen to touch this declination but it goes through this decla declination. Um, so that's problematic. Although right now we're just looking at points, so I'm not sure how that would work exactly. Um, and in fact, we don't even have ranges on the right ascensions, so I'm not sure how that would work either. Uh, well, let, let's try it. Um, let's look at all the ones for like declination 34.5. Okay. Wow. So there are very few of those. So that might not work then. Okay. So the very original form here is just this, which I guess we can decimalize pretty easily. Um, and so all, are all of these actually like going to be shared by two or more constellations, which is the only way I can make sense out of this. Okay, so Pegasus and Pisces share this. Uh, and this. But we don't know which one is on top of which. Uh, and I mean, we could imagine that the first one that shows up All right. You know what? Let's use the um, let's look at some of the 20 ones and see what this. So let's bound in 20. Um, and this is very, you know, this is very, uh, deeply, uh, this is a big file because they have to precess the boundaries. Uh, let's see. So, do I need to do sort for that? Something tells me 
this is not what I want. Okay. Well, shit. Um, there does not appear to be um, a native There does not appear to be a native version of the file that this guy's giving us. Um, really? I don't have an alien. Oh, I do have a. Sorry, I have a T. I have a T Rex. That that thing. Yeah, that one's fine. Okay. So what Constelcy is giving us here is a bunch of data that I don't think is available anywhere else. The question is, can we get it from somewhere else? And I'm beginning to think the answer is not easily. We don't have this sort of cut up range that somebody else has built for us in an easy way. So, so we, we need to kind of use this the way it is and then just follow their advice and basically say, um, you've basically drawn for every possible declination uh, that's in a, that is a boundary. You've sort of gone, um, you sort of gone ahead and and indicated what the RA range is. And the way to do that is. Um, Maybe there's no easy way to do that. Maybe, I mean, you, po you, you, know, you followed the polygons, you know where the, the boundaries are, you know what regions it is that you're defining. Um, uh, but the question is, how do you... Um, okay, you know what, we, we still might be able to pull this off. Um, there is one that has, uh, there is one that has, I'm in the wrong place. Uh, there is one that had like three, um, like an M plus and an M minus in it, I remember. So let's take a look f at that. Edges 18, okay, awesome. So what this gives us is, This is an increase in declination, good. And it is the border between Andromeda and Lyserta. Um, well, actually, I actually think this, is mean, this means meridional plus, this means latitudinal plus, which is fine. Andromeda and Cassopia. And these are another one, okay, that's fine. Okay. And the problem is we do not know which side anything is on. Okay, so after, you know, killing lots of your time, we're going to go ahead and use the uh, const LC. I'm not going to use it as is because it doesn't actually compile. Nope. I meant this sucker. Um, and I'm going to move the damn thing into Perl. And then I think I, I can nail what we need to do here. Um, well, actually, I think I can do a little bit better than that. Uh, let's see. So once you've gotten over here... Let's go ahead and do... Uh, 2020-0122 constl.c Okay. Const names and I think I'm going to need to use a um, I would just say names, you know, what the hell. I think I need to use a bracket here. But aside from that I can boogie. Let's 
escape W, escape O, do this, do that, and because I hate, wow, this is pretty big. Is Volpeca the last one? Oh, there's actually an extra comma there that they didn't need. But anyway. Now the question is, can I turn this into a one line? Uh, do I care? I probably don't. Uh, okay. Let's just make sure that the uh, spaces at the end of these things don't mess it up. No, it's not what I want. Also not what I want. There we is. Line 10. Oh, someone has nastily put in some C comments here, which we can get rid of. I think that's the only one, though, so we're fine. That's kind of nice. All right. Uh, names is an array. Um, actually, I think I probably want names to be not a reference to an array, but the actual array itself. And I think this works in... in, in uh, yeah, it does. Okay, good. Um, Unfortunately, it looks like we're breaking across lines here, which maybe I don't care about. Mm. But maybe I do. I'm going to return the return character with the space. Not there, but there, 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 there. Dun, 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 dun. That's the uh, it's Dixie. All right, now let's see if that works. That looks nice. I like it. Uh, where are the frickus serpents, though? <whistles> Serpentos should be broken into two, but anyway. Um, okay, and bounds is just going to be that array. Uh, I don't need Greek letters. That's the Yankee Doodle da Dandy, by the way. Um, okay. So, and these are going to be from here. Don't worry, worry, I'll get the first one. Down to... Um, you know, quite, quite, quite a long list. Uh, we'll, you know, we'll get a little bit extra, actually. Escape W. So, get it in here. Do this. Wow. This is, this is, this is pretty freaking long. Um, I wonder how many lines there are. Interesting. And see if there's anything here that matches that number of lines that has the potential to be this list in another form. So, nope, we don't do this. We do this, this. And then where we have this, we do this, and we do this, and then we do control Q. That looks really bad. Um, maybe, all right. It's time once again to change new lines into spaces. Control O, return with space. Yes, yes. Then we're going, to return, we're going to replace multiple spaces with a single space. So that'll be, that'll be good, too. Number this whole huge, nasty-looking list in front of us. Okay. It's actually an array of arrays, we, but whatever. Jesus freaking Christ. Okay. I don't think it's going to get that much shorter when I do this. But anyway. And in this case, it's a regular expression. Space plus with a single space. 
Dun, dun, dun. This is just actually a complete waste of time here. This is not going to work any better like this. Um, actually, the more I think about it, we probably can't even use it in this exact format. Uh, actually, we probably can. So now we, we can actually implement a uh, find, uh, you know, where given RA and DEC is in Constellation using this data, and we can even implement that in C. In fact, that's what this guy's done. Uh, we're trying to take the shortcut of creating a file that already sort of knows this information and doesn't have to do a for loop each time. Although, honestly, 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 I'm not sure this is gonna be any better than, than that way. Okay, so we are primed, prepped, and ready. And, damn it, that, let me just stop doing that. And I've been streaming for another two hours, so I think we're gonna call it for tonight, or today, or whatever it is. Um, okay. And just a second here while I take care of other business, even though I'm just about to quit anyway. Okay, so I think what we're going to pick up with next time is we're going to try to get this, um, uh, we're going to try to see if this hideous looking list might just be the way to go anyway. Um, because what I think it defines is essentially a bunch of of boxes. Um, I'm still not totally crazy about it. I'd like to understand it better. Um, and maybe we will... Well, I guess the big, big problem here is the that when you hit 24 hours, the original lists do not allow you to go from like 23 hours to one hour, uh, which is just horrible, horrible, horrible uh, for... Um, for any sort of fight, because, you know, it's, it's a reverse polygon at that point, but it's really a forward polygon. Uh, there might be ways to get around that, um, but it just strikes me as being really, really ugly. I guess you, what you could do is you could look at the, the boundary lines, and if they cross, um, chop them into two boundary lines, but I think there's, there's still some issues there. Okay, thank you for watching the stream and have a pleasant rest of your day, or whatever it is.